Hello, everyone, and welcome to the So Heil Ali Show, a podcast where I tell you what I'm thinking, what I'm not, and you'll understand the difference by elimination. Guys, I am so excited today to be bringing you a brand new episode of this podcast. This is episode 49, and by the time you're listening to this, it is Monday, September 30th, the last day of September 2024. And we have a great episode for you all today. As you can see by the title, by the description, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of things, including but not limited to New York City's mayor getting indicted, uh, UNLV football, some crazy news coming out of the uh, NCAA, you know, pay for play, all kinds of crazy stuff there. Uh, The Oakland A's, shout out to the Oakland, uh, at one point, the Oakland A's uh, baseball team. America's Got Talent had a new winner and someone that might be from somewhere pretty close to me. Here in Bloomington, uh, some news from Batman, Elon Musk, Cards Against Humanity. Holy hell. We're talking about everything, guys. It's going to be a great episode. I'm here. You're here. You're tuned in. You're listening. Sit back. Relax. Let's have a great episode. With that being said, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please, please give this podcast a five-star rating. It would really help us out. Give it a follow. Hit that bell icon to stay updated with all the uh, latest episodes there. Uh, keeping things sounding well. And of course, if you are watching on YouTube, uh, please leave a like, comment below, and subscribe for all future episodes. Hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button to stay updated with all future episodes. Guys, here we are. It is uh, it is another week. It's another day. I hope you're doing well. I appreciate you all uh, tuning in. I hope you've all had a good week since the last time. The last episode of this podcast actually did very well on YouTube, so I want to applaud you all. If you watched it, if you were part of it, congratulations. It was the most viewed video on this channel in like nearly a year, so I really appreciate it. It's almost at 400 views, the podcast episode. Pretty good, pretty good. Shout out to the uh, the tags and all the, the SEO stuff for the inside baseball fans there. Uh, but So basically, that was a, a nice thing to have there, so I appreciate you all. Uh, pumping those views up and continue to watch and, and subscribe. So let's jump into it, guys. I want to make sure we get through all these amazing topics. Uh, I'll give you through the trending topics I want to talk about today. We'll go through my weekly recap. Had a fun weekend, did some cool things. I'll tell you all about that. Talk through some new jokes and the classic write that down jokes. New jokes bit. New jokes, folks. Don't judge. They're new, right? They're all new. And then uh, plug some upcoming shows that I'm doing for stand up comedy. And we'll be out of here. Does that sound good? Timer? All right. We are here, man, and this is the first trending topic, as I alluded to in the beginning. So here we go. New York City Mayor Eric Adams has been indicted. Uh, indicted, yeah, that's right, indicted, on charges of charges of bribery in a federal indictment. This is true. Uh, you know, this is this was a this was a huge story, uh, kind of coming to a head last Friday. I'm sure probably many of you. Heard about it, uh, but uh, Mayor Eric Adams over the last several years was apparently um, taking bribes, taking gifts from uh, foreign nationals, in particular from Turkey. Uh, That's right. Uh, Turkish nationals uh, were giving Mayor Eric Adams, you know, first class flights, hotels, meals, a whole, a really good time. And it's Turkey, you know, you know, it's going to be a good time. Uh, You know, they're showing him all the nice places. He's petting all the cool cats, you know. They have a lot of cats there, I've heard. But, uh, but yeah, man, this this came out, and to which I just said, you know, even after all this fraud, you know, trying to cover it up, he is still not the most corrupt New York mayor they've ever had. He is still not the most corrupt mayor New York has ever had, uh, thanks to a one Rudy Giuliani, Rudolph, if you will. So this was a crazy story, man. He got ahead of it. He had like a press conference on Friday with a, a bunch of folks behind him, you know, under the under the tent there trying to get ahead of it and uh, immediately was heckled by people on the street. You know, they were like, you know, resign, resign on a megaphone. You know, it's New York City. You cannot. I can't imagine anybody who has any charges against them, whatever side, whatever political side. I mean, this guy was the mayor of New York City and not getting any hecklers on the street. Are you kidding me? This is like. Uh, comedy club, you know, times ten. It's it's New Yorkers for crying out loud. But it was uh, it was big news, and uh, this was you know big big topic here. I guess he's standing by his stance that he did nothing wrong, and you know those those documents just forged themselves. You know it happens. You know how documents are. You know one thing, one second it's there, the next second where to go? I don't know. That's it's life. Sometimes things change. 
uh, maybe the, the the receipts they fabricated themselves, you know? AI is crazy. It's doing all sorts and not, it's crazy stuff, you know? You never know. But, uh, so yeah, that's the news out of uh, New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Uh, the mayor for now. We'll see. But uh, what do you all think about this story? Did you hear about this story? I want to know your thoughts. Leave a comment below. Let me know. Let's start a conversation about this, you know? Uh, if you were the mayor, would you be, you know... Everyone likes to say, oh, I mean, if that were me, I, I wouldn't be corrupt. Yeah, well, you, you get a little power and then all of a sudden, you know, having a little extra leg room and, and laying down in that bed. You know what happened? He, here's what happened. Eric Adams probably saw one of Casey Neistat's flight videos, you know, Casey Neistat's videos where it's like, I rode it in a $50,000 airplane. I swear, Eric Adams probably saw one of those. Former fellow, fellow New Yorker, Casey Neistat. And he was probably like, well, I'd like to get in on that. So really, really, I blame Casey Neistat for this whole problem. I really do. So Casey, if you're watching or listening, thanks a lot. But uh, but that's, you know, just something coming to mind there. Uh, let's clip that. Clip, clip, clip. Thank you. Um, all right. That's just for me editing later. Um, guys, let's see what else we're talking about here. Okay. This was another uh, very interesting story that I thought uh, is relevant in the world of sports. We're talking, to, speaking of fraud, not necessarily at a political level, but we're talking at the athletic level, at the name, image, and likeness level. So kind of political, if you think about it. Okay, let's see if I can get through this one. All right. So uh, last week, uh, recently, let's say, UNLV quarterback Matthew Sluka decided to leave the team after he believes, after he did not receive a what he claims to be promised $100,000 for being on the UNLV football team. So apparently, uh, Matthew Sluka, the quarterback, uh, when he transferred to UNLV, apparently, according to his agent, they received a verbal confirmation, verbal, keyword being, that Sluka would receive $100,000 upon signing with the team. You know, sign on bonus, right? This is the NIL era, right? Pay players in college are making money for playing uh, college sports you know this has been a big issue for a long time they're making so much money off of these players why don't we let them earn some money so in marketing you know brand deals all that sort of stuff right but this quarterback at UNLV was apparently told from his agent and they were apparently given a verbal confirmation that they would be receiving a hundred thousand dollars upon signing of which they apparently did not so what did he do he decided to leave the team they were like three and oh headed to the playoffs it was a crazy run and their quarterback it was pretty good too he was pretty good i don't know about hundred thousand dollars good but he was pretty good and he decided to leave and try at the transfer portal and see what he can get from there and everyone's clowning on his agent you know they're like how how dumb can this guy be to just accept a verbal offer like yeah obviously but the worst part for us here is his agent has an MBA from the Kelly School of Business. I'm going to say that again. The agent of Matthew Sluka has a master's in business administration, an MBA from our very own Indiana University's Kelly School of Business. Now, this is going to be one story they're not going to mention in the brochure. I guarantee you that. Because if this is the business acumen of the Kelly alum, then a lot of future athletes are also in trouble. But guys, really, with this story, I just have to say one thing, which is apparently uh, UNLV and the state of Nevada were saying that what Matthew Saluka and his agent were doing were apparently violating pay-for-play laws in Nevada. Um, this is definitely the first time that Nevada has had a problem with paying for play. This is definitely the first time Nevada has had a problem with pay for play because of Las Vegas, right? Um, so when it comes, you know, you can go gamble your life away in the casino, but as soon as you try to make us pay you to shoot, you know, hit that cross route, you know, touchdown, have some, you know, a good college football game, then then we're going to get a little suspicious. I want to see like a casino style movie about college football corruption. I swear, I think we're about maybe three, four years away from a full blown documentary about how the NIL completely either destroyed or took college football to a level that none of us saw coming. So this is this is just this is just the beginning of this whole saga. 
Matthew Sluka, the quarterback. So what do you think? Uh, clip this, by the way. Let's clip, 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 clip. Clip that, please. What do you think about this story, man? Did you guys see this story? Matthew Sluka, UNLV quarterback. Comment below. What do you think? If you were the quarterback, you know, I think they agreed to give him like $25,000 over the, the season, something like that. But what would you do? Would you stick by your team? Uh, your team who's winning, go far, you know, try, try to do something cool? Or would you try to go for, you know, whatever your value is? Try to be like, you know what? I'm young. I'm going to get this value now while I have it. Maybe you do that. Uh, myself, I've never been paid for my athleticism. Uh, and that comes as no surprise. But uh, I will say, you know, when we were county champs in middle school, they gave us some pretty good snacks for football. That was a pretty good incentive. You know, people were nice, a lot of high fives. Um, I would have taken $100,000 uh, to do whatever they said. Are you kidding me? But uh, you know what? People are different. So comment below. Leave a comment right now what you think. What would you have done if you were the quarterback? What would you do? What do you think of NIL in general? Comment below. Let me know. Let's start a conversation on that. Uh, and we are clipping that one for sure. Clip, clip, clip. All right. Uh, here we go, guys. We're moving on to the next topic here. Uh, speaking of sports and speaking of um, not corruption, but, you know, big changes in the world of sports, the Oakland A's have officially left Oakland. That's right. The Oakland A's baseball team. We all know the team, of course. And, of course, if you're a fan of good movies, you know the movie Moneyball was about this team. The Oakland A's have officially played their last game to a sellout crowd in Oakland, marking the end of the A's era as an Oakland team. And now, uh, according to this, they're going to be um, you moving. They're going to be moving to a temporary location. That's what it was. They're also going to Vegas. That's why I said, speaking of sports and Vegas, the Oakland A's are, like the Raiders, going to be moving to Las Vegas. That's right. In about two years, I think 2027, they announced the Oakland A's are going to be playing in Las Vegas. And temporarily, temporarily, the Oakland A's are going to be moving to Westside Sacramento. Now, you know you're a struggling franchise when you have to move to the west side of Sacramento. Okay, I have a lot of family in Sacramento, some of which are probably listening right now. I love you guys. Uh, but uh, the east side of Sacramento ain't nothing safe either. I'm not saying it's the east or the middle, but the west side, I can only imagine. Sacramento, I'm just saying, man, like uh, Oakland is certainly not, you know, someone you, someplace. Oakland is certainly not someplace you want to leave your car uh, unattended. But the west side of Sacramento, I can't imagine is somewhere you, you know, take a nice date either. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Sacramento, they got some good stuff. You kidding me? I live in a college town in the Midwest. Who am I to talk? Pretty low crime rates, though. But uh, I would say that uh, that's kind of the whole thing there. You know your team is struggling when they got to move to the west side of Sacramento. But, you know, compared to Oakland, it's probably, what, a tenth safer, maybe? Maybe you can go out a little bit after dark. Probably not too long. You'll end up under that bridge. But uh, shout out to Sacramento. I know there's a lot of my family uh, from there listening. Thank you. I love you. But that's a wrap on Oakland sports. Really, guys, you know, Oakland at one point had the Warriors NBA team. They had the Raiders football team and they had the A's baseball team. And now I don't know. I don't know what's left, but Oakland is left with a whole lot of things, including my combustion engine that was stolen from my car. Uh, that's not true, but it's certainly true for many people. I'd imagine. Uh, I actually did do an open mic in Oakland one time. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Shout out to the Bay Area comedy scene. Very cool uh, comedians. And, uh, you know, they know where to go and where not to go because they are still alive. All right. Um, we are going to move on here. You know, get some good use this time because I want to make sure I talk to you all about a very exciting story that came out of, uh, of, of national news, really. But that includes something pretty close, pretty close to the where I call home. Pretty close to where I call home. And that is America's Got Talent officially gave the winner, gave out the winner. No, the first place winner was Richard Goodall, the singing janitor from Terre Haute, Indiana, baby. That's right. This is the best thing that happened to Terre Haute since Larry Bird. I'll tell you that right now. And Larry Bird didn't have, even have to sing. Larry Bird didn't, have, didn't even have to sing. He just cleaned up on the court. Just like Mr. Goodall does, uh, 
being the, the baddest white dude basketball ever saw, probably since then. I don't know, Scalabrini was okay. But uh, yeah, that's right, uh, Richard Goodall, he went viral last year from his singing video. He was a janitor, is a janitor in Terre Haute, Indiana. That's literally an hour and a half away from Bloomington. I've gone to Terre Haute many times to do comedy. They have uh, open mics. A lot of our comedian friends live there. And this guy, Richard Goodall, won America's Got Talent. It's freaking amazing, dude. 100% deserved. He has an amazing voice. He was singing Journey songs, Don't Stop Believing. Oh, oh my God, you cannot watch this without bawling your eyes out and going, you know what? Maybe I'll pick up a mop myself, you know? It's like with all these heartwarming stories, it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> you kind of got to be like in that position where, you know, they're not going to be like, all right, you know, let's give it to the to, to someone who, you know, had some had some stuff growing up. You give it to the privileged kid. No, no, no. It's got to be a heartwarming story. It's deserved. I, of course, believe he deserves it. But at the same time, it's like, oh, that's a hell of a story. It is a hell of a story. Terre Haute janitor turned... America's Got Talent winner. This is amazing. So congratulations to Richard Goodall. And uh, he won a million dollars. And he was welcomed back at the school. All the kids high-fiving him and stuff. I'm sure they're like, hey, man, you know, I I told the teacher about you. I Whoever posted the video is probably thinking, hey, you know, th that worked out pretty well for you, didn't it there, uh, didn't it there uh, Richard? Maybe give me a little cut on that uh, TikTok I posted of you. Howie Mandel duetted it. It was pretty good, you know? Maybe uh, kind of led to the whole thing? No. But uh, yeah, man, best thing to happen to Terre Haute since Larry Bird, and he sang like a canary, I'll tell you that. No, he's, he was not interrogated. But uh, but yeah, man, that's a pretty cool story, right? America's Got Talent winner from Indiana, baby. Terre Haute putting it on the map, so shout out to Richard, man. He freaking killed it. Uh, we might clip that. We'll see. But um, okay, we are moving along here. Uh, I want to talk about uh, this next story which is pretty cool. I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, Batman became the first superhero to get their own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. This is true. The Caped Crusader is now the first superhero from comic books or any other medium that is now has their very own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I believe Batman as a character was created in 1939 by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. And uh, my former professor... IU alumni and proud Batman originator, the executive producer of all the Batman films, Michael Uslan, uh, played a big role in bringing Batman, bringing the Dark Knight to the silver screen. Um, Professor Uslan, he's always back in town teaching his classes. I've taken both his classes. He's awesome. And we literally would not have movies from Batman 1989 to now Joker 2 coming out this weekend had it not been for Michael and his tenacity in getting those films made. And now Batman has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which I thought was fitting, which I thought was fitting because now the crime fighter himself is going to have a lot of crime to fight because his star is on Hollywood Boulevard. I don't know if you've been to Hollywood Boulevard, but uh, you are lucky to survive it if you have. Um, and maybe you walked away with somebody's mixtape and hopefully you didn't have to, and hopefully you weren't harassed for, you know, $10. But that was the whole thing there. This guy is a, is a crime fight, a superhero, and there's a lot of villains on that street. So he's going to be pretty close to them, pretty close to them. So, hey, maybe the next, you know, Joker in real life will be inspired by seeing the Batman star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And then, you know, we'll know what caused it all. So thanks a lot, Hollywood. But... Uh, yeah, pretty cool story there. My favorite superhero, for sure, Batman. And, you know, I saw the Dark Knight in movie theaters eight times. I was 10 years old. Said I was seeing Madagascar 2, you know, again. And they were like, yeah, sure, go ahead. So that's what I told uh, Professor Uslin when I when I took his class. I was like, you know, I want to let him know how much of an impact, like, the Dark Knight had on me as a young kid. I said, Miss Professor, you know, I saw the Dark Knight in theaters, like, eight times. I was 10 years old and I didn't ever buy a ticket to it. I always bought a ticket to something else and then snuck into the Dark Knight. So I apologize. I did not contribute to the breaking box office that it did at the time. And he enjoyed that. So you got to get it how you get it, folks. I'll tell you. But um, so, yeah, go see it. If you're in Hollywood, if you're in L.A., go check out Hollywood Boulevard. Go see the Batman star. Uh, who do you think 
needs a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Let's talk about that. Who do you think deserves a star? I know all the great stars have one. Um, I'm going to make sure right now uh, that Don Rickles has one. If Don Rickles does not have a Hollywood star, I'm going to fucking lose my shit. Okay, he does. Don Rickles does have one. But what about Norm MacDonald? Norm behind me. I know he wasn't really big in Hollywood, but I mean, he did. Uh, please tell me Norm MacDonald has one. No way. Norm MacDonald does not have one? That's nuts, dude. Oh, man. Okay, well, that's that's my new campaign for sure. And so long as this background is behind me and I got Norm R.I.P. Uh, McDonald's uh, photo behind me, I will advocate for this. Norm McDonald needs a Hollywood star. Are you kidding me? Very, very influential figure. And I just in comedy, um, television, Saturday Night Live broadcast. Are you kidding me? Weekend update? Whoa. Okay. Yeah, Norm McDonald for sure goes to the top of that list. Guys, um, so yeah, comment below who you think needs a Hollywood star. Let's talk about that. And as we get into the last trending topic here, I just want to remind you all, if you're still listening, still watching, I appreciate you. Uh, just leave a like, comment below, and subscribe for all the future episodes, man. It's been a fun time. Um, let's talk about, uh, real quick, this story. This was a story I saw early last week regarding Cards Against Humanity, the uh, the game. Are you guys familiar with this game? Cards Against Humanity, Elon Musk, SpaceX, and land disputes of all the things so the company cards against humanity has filed a 15 million dollar lawsuit against elon musk and spacex why because apparently uh mr musk's company took land that was originally uh being saved or originally purchased or originally held by the cards against humanity company we're talking about land on the border of texas right uh, to which I said, I mean, I want them to get their fair share. I want, I want justice to be served. But what? how much land does a card company need? You know what I mean? Like, they're just writing jokes and stuff on the cards, right? Like, do you really need, you know, tens of thousands of square footage for this for this company? Like, how how much paper, how much, how many trees are being burned to create these decks like are they really churning them out like that is it crazy i don't know i played cards against humanity it's pretty fun it's pretty fun but um but yeah that was my whole thing there it was just like why of all the things a a, a card a, a board game company essentially a card company they need this much land i mean spacex they've i know they need land but like you know why why they just but i mean this is not the first time elon musk has done something shady this we, this we all know um, you know, buying Twitter, firing all the, you know, people who look at all the, I don't know, safety, stuff like that. I just, you know, repeat what I heard once. But, uh, yeah, Cards Against Humanity. You ever play this game? It's a pretty fun game. You guys should play it. Uh, they are not paying me, but I would I would accept it. And I hope they get their land back, especially if they're going to use that money to sponsor me. But, um, I don't know, board, like, build it. Who's even back in the building? I mean, I work in a building, but who's... Like like tech companies maybe, but trading card or board game cards in a you need to be in person in a big building maybe a lot of whiteboards to brainstorm on I guess um okay guys we're coming close to the end of the episode so I want to make sure we get a few things uh, talked about here so I had a great weekend uh, Indiana football is five and zero oh. let's go Hoosiers baby yes they are five and zero oh. uh, we had a great time at the game uh, we stayed the whole game. And it was wet. It was raining. It was a hell of a game back and forth. IU beat Maryland. And now IU is 5-0. and And we just got ranked. We just got ranked. I think we're 23 in the AP college football rankings. The Indiana Hoosiers, baby. It's a great time to be a Hoosier. And uh, that was really fun. Uh, also, this past weekend, I got to do those uh, Best of the Fest shows at the Comedy Attic. That was really fun. We did four shows over two nights. And the crowds were awesome, man. Friday night late show. Uh, it was one of the best sets I've had in a long time. I really needed that one for the old ego there. And it was really fun. So shout out to everybody who came to those shows. Shut up. You guys can't hear. There's a freaking sirens going off behind me. Downtown Bloomington's fired up. But literally, there's a fire truck. But great shows. And then Saturday after the last show, the staff of the Comedy Attic, myself, a bunch of the other comedians, uh, Jared, the owner, we all stayed and we watched 
the debut episode of season 50 of Saturday Night Live with the introduction of former Bloomington comedian, starting at the Comedy Attic, the one and only Emil Joachim in his first episode on Saturday Night Live. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing to be in the place where his comedy career began, to watch him make it to Saturday Night Live. And it was just so, so amazing, man. So inspiring. So congratulations, congratulations to Emil. And uh, we can't wait to see more of him on SNL. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And you got to be sure to watch and know and see how good the Bloomington comedy scene is that we make people that get to SNL. I say that because I'm trying to live up to the hype. And uh, I'm doing my best. Just trying to work it one joke at a time. And you know what? Let's talk through some of those jokes while we're at it. Let's see how funny this guy really is. This is not going to be good. Um, okay, let's talk. So, um... Let's go. WTD jokes. New jokes, big guys. New jokes. Here we go. I uh, I saw, you know, remember the Titanic submersible? You remember this story? All the billionaires went down and they never came up. The Apparently, the Titanic submersible safety team, uh, quote, uh, the, the headline is, Titan submersible company neglected safety concerns. Titan submersible company neglected safety concerns concerns ex employees say right i was like yeah duh that's like the weinstein company saying well you know some people turned a blind eye to horseplay or uh like people saying you know uh diddy's friends were just in the other room you know it's like <laughs> we all knew it was happening we were just trying to push to whatever goal we needed to get to uh or whoever it was but that was, you know, something funny there, you know. Uh, it's a little more, a little more, a little more than they're letting on, let's just say. This is hardly this time for innuendo, you know. Um, yeah, the uh, the submersible company ignoring safety concerns is a ballsy move. Like, oh, the two-ton metal pill we're sending to the floor of the ocean has some flaws in the design. Ah, screw it, I'm sure it's fine, you know. We'll make a hell of a PR story, you know. It might increase our sales. No one likes our customers anyway. <laughs> They were trying to kill them. They knew who their clientele is. Billionaires, no one feels bad for billionaires or their children. That's a fact. I mean, maybe when their bodies are recovered. Um, okay, uh, we want to make sure we get out of here in a good time. Uh, let's talk about this one real quick. Um, so, uh, my, I always talk about, you know, I have some jokes about my parents being from Afghanistan and how they came to Indiana in search of the American dream, but they didn't search very long because they settled on Indiana, right? Like, that's the joke. And I want to add something like, you know, they came and saw the Republican Party in a red state and we're like, oh, cool. They got the Taliban here, too. That's great. They, oh, they got diet Taliban. That's awesome. Nice. It's, you know, it's a little taste of home. I don't know. <laughs> a little taste of home. Sure. Sure. Um, Guys, I want to make sure we get out of here on a good note. Uh, you know, this has been fun. I always love to to just run through these, get as much as we can and while we can. So I think that was a I think that was a fun one. We did some fun things in there. Uh, I appreciate you all still listening, still watching. Let's go ahead and plug some upcoming shows I have coming up, guys, in the next uh, couple of weeks. This no, not this weekend. Uh, Friday, October 11th. So next weekend. Friday, October 11th, and uh, Saturday, October 12th, I will be hosting at the Comedy Attic for headliner Mike Vecchione. Very funny comedian Mike Vecchione. He tours with Nate Bargetzi. Amazing headliner in his own right. Mike Vecchione will be at the Comedy Attic Friday, October 11th, and Saturday, October 12th. You can get your tickets now. It's going to be an amazing show, 7 o'clock and 9.15. I can't wait for it. And then on Wednesday, October 16th, Wednesday, October 16th, I'll be at uh, Kilroy's on Kirkwood, KOK, here in Bloomington doing a comedy show. Shout out to Carnivore Comedy. Be sure to follow them for all the updates. That's 9 o'clock p.m., Kilroy's on Kirkwood comedy show. I don't drink, but depending on how the set goes, I'm considering it, and it'll be a good time there. So, guys, this has been a hell of an episode, episode 49 of the So High Lali Show. If you're still listening, you're still watching, I love you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great rest of your week, a great start to your week. You know, follow your dreams. You know, trust your gut. Go with your heart. Uh, all the other sappy things. Can we get the violin music? No, can't afford it. But uh, I'm just so happy uh, that anybody is still listening or watching uh, this kind of thing. So I appreciate it. I really do. 
Leave a like, comment below, subscribe, follow, and do all that stuff. Uh, I love you. Have a good week, and I will talk to you all. We're going to have a guest in the next episode. It's going to be a fun time. Uh, look forward to a guest episode to kick off October next week. I've been so high, Lali, and I will talk to you all next week. Goodbye. Real quick before you click away, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment below, and subscribe for all future videos. Hit that bell icon to be notified for all uploads. Have a good one.